This is Newsmax TV. I'm Ashley Martella. We're joined by Dick Morris, the title of his latest book, 2010 Take Back America, A Battle Plan. Welcome again, Dick. Thank you. A potential terrorist almost detonated a bomb in Times Square. He came very close and the plot clearly wasn't prevented. What do you think are the holes in our defenses? After 9-11, the U.S. went seven years under the Bush presidency without any attack on U.S. soil. And now in the year and a half of the Obama presidency, we've had three of them. Uh, the Fort Hood massacre, uh, the Detroit airplane bomb that didn't go off simply because an alert passenger spotted it in time, and the Times Square bomb that didn't go off because an alert street vendor spotted it in time. Now, I like passengers and street vendors, but I would rather rely on Homeland Security operatives, the CIA, the FBI, and the New York Police Department to stop these acts of terror. Uh, but the problem is that their hands are tied. Uh, we Mirandize uh, people who we apprehend in terror attacks. We have them, an attorney sitting right there during the investigation. Uh, we can't follow leads. Uh, our personnel are told to avoid at all costs violating the civil liberties of anyone we arrest. Interrogation techniques have to be super gentle and kid gloves. Uh, and most important of all, the operatives who are doing the investigation are more frightened of the government than the terrorist being investigated is. Okay, those law enforcement agencies you mentioned and others managed to get onto the Times Square bomber before he was about to fly out of the country, but they almost didn't make it. Faisal Shahzad was on the no-fly list, but managed to get past airport security and board the jet bound for the United Arab Emirates before he was taken off. Plus, he paid for his plane ticket in cash. Dick, are there some red lights here that should have gone off but didn't? Well, don't you think they should check who's on a no-fly list before they let you fly? That would sound pretty elementary to me. But these aren't just Keystone Cops errors. These are the result of a policy of the Obama administration of minimizing terrorism, minimizing the war on terror, refusing to describe it accurately as a war against Islamic fundamentalist terrorism. Uh, it's all a byproduct of that. You can't have the loosening of our guard and our vigilance that Obama has brought about and at the same time expect to avoid terror attacks. All right, there's growing chatter Israel will strike Iran this year, maybe in just a matter of months. Some Jewish leaders concerned about Obama's policies. What do you see happening with Iran, Dick? Well, I think that the United States, under both Bush and Obama, has defaulted uh, in its efforts to prevent Iran from developing nuclear weapons. I've said many times on this show and others that we could stop Iran by imposing a blockade or a cutoff of their gasoline supplies from the refineries in Dubai. Both houses of Congress have passed a resolution urging the administration to do that, and they have refused to do it. Uh, well, that's left us in a situation where the sanctions we're imposing probably will be too minor and too late to do anything. And I think Israel will be forced to attack. I think they're going to lose huge, lose huge numbers of men and aircraft doing so. Uh, and I think it'll be a tragedy for world peace and for Israel and, of course, for Iran. Uh, that could have been averted had the United States been on its guard and really moved against Iran early enough. But when it comes down to a matter of survival, you have to side with the Israelis in their decision to attack. All right, another topic. U.S. primary elections this week. Any surprises there and anything to bolster your assertion that Republicans will take back both houses of Congress in November? Yeah, I was struck by the decrease in the Democratic Party turnout and the increase in the Republican Party turnout. <clears throat> I know that in one of the states, I believe it was Indiana, the Democratic turnout was about 200,000, about one-third less than it had been in 2006, the previous off-year off -year primary for Senate. And uh, the Republican turnout was about 10 percent higher. And while that's not a foolproof indication, it certainly shows a lack of engagement by the Democrats and an intense interest by the Republicans. All right, special elections, Mirtha, Hawaii. Does the GOP win? I think we'll definitely win Mirtha's seat. Hawaii is probably the most Democratic state in the country, and uh, Obama's from Hawaii. I think that might be a bit of a stretch. But we were helped this week when Dave Obey, O-B-E-Y of Wisconsin, 
who's been in Congress since 1974, uh, announced that he was not going to run again, and that's a district the Republicans could pick up. More and more people are now coming to agree with the observation that I made six or eight months ago that I thought the Republicans were going to take the House. They still haven't come around to my way of thinking about the Senate, but they will. Why do you think Obi quit Congress? Because he couldn't win. He had a tough race in a district, and he didn't choose to end a somewhat distinguished 38-year career with a defeat. All right, and finally, Charlie Crist. We know you think it was traitorous on his part to run as an independent, but a new Rasmussen poll shows him leading. Can Crist win, do you think? No, I think that's just the burst of enthusiasm after his declaration of candidacy. He's just had a lot of statewide media and statewide attention. Uh, the poll that Rasmussen conducted prior to Crist's announcement had him in second place at 30 and Rubio in first place at 36. Uh, and uh, the Democrat Meeks uh, down around 23. Uh, in this poll, though, I was encouraged that the Democrat Meek was at about 19 percent. Look, I believe that Christ was engaged in an unpardonable act of egomania. But if he's elected, so be it, just as long as he doesn't split the vote and elect a Democrat Meek. All right, the British elections. Why should Americans care about the outcome? Well, for two reasons. First of all, uh, Britain is probably the closest example we have of what Barack Obama wants to make America into. Uh, it's the, uh, we have our natural affinity with Britain, and uh, they are a socialist country struggling to emerge from socialism, and I think a conservative victory there would say a lot about what's going to happen in the United States. Uh, I think also the likely, the possibility of no party getting majority and the ultra-left liberal Democrats uh, getting power. Uh, they're the party that actually opposed the Iraq war, whereas both Labor and the Conservatives supported it. If they get power and they become the balance of power between two parties and decide who, with whom to form a coalition, that could move Britain decisively to the left, and I think that would be a bad idea. But I believe the Conservatives are going to win, and I believe they're going to win without having to rely on the Liberal Democrats. And lastly, Greece. Any implications for the EU and the U.S. and global economy? Oh, that is our future, Ashley. When you look at Greece, you're looking at the, at the United States years from now, uh, two or three years under Obama's policies. The same deficits, the same lack of st controlling spending that have landed Greece in such turmoil and Spain and Portugal about to follow, and Italy not far behind. Uh, those same policies will eventually spread to the United States and to Britain because our deficits are just as high, and they were contracted just as irresponsibly by a socialist regime. Uh, we went through a period at the start of the Obama presidency and the end of the Bush where investors made a run on banks and were worried that banks could not repay their obligations. And that was attenuated and brought to a halt because government stepped in and said, we're standing behind these banks. You can trust us. You don't have to trust the bank. And now inevitably, with government having these huge deficits of totally unnecessary spending, uh, soon investors are going to get smart and going to say, I question you, Mr. Government. I question you on whether you're serious about holding down spending and holding down the budget deficit. And we're beginning to see that with Greece. Um, and after all, Germany is now standing behind Greece and with France and propping up the euro. But I think soon they're going to have to cut Greece loose and pull the euro back to a smaller number of countries. And I think inevitably this kind of distrust in government is going to affect the markets and turn into what the United States is going to face. Dick Morris, as always, very insightful, very good. Thank you very much. Thank you. And thank you for watching Newsmax TV.